So now I can start my talk. So I'm going to talk talk about the star formation and some of some observation methods that we use. Okay, now let's move out this stuff here. Okay. So yeah, as I said, I it, when during the during the presentation or after the presentation, you can ask your questions through Twitter, and this is my Twitter account. So yeah, you can just uh, use it. So as I said, I'm going to talk about the star formation and the observation methods. So okay, let's begin with the stars. So we look at the sky, we see a lot of stuff there. So for example, stars, planets, you know, comets, meteors, and everything. But you know, we are actually a stardust, right? So all the atoms or molecules, not all, but uh, many of the atoms or molecules are actually formed inside the stars. Uh, but the thing is, you know, where are these stars coming from, you know, and how did they form, and how many of, how many stars are out there, and is there an end, you know, uh, those kind of questions that we are always uh, asking. So let's let's start with the definition of a star. So the everybody knows what a star is. It's not a, it's not actually a you know straightforward question. You know we 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 just look at the dark sky and we see stars out there. But it's not actually a simple question. So the the what we define for a star is is the time when the when its thermonuclear reaction starts. So what happens is. Uh, so before the thermonuclear reaction starts, we call it star formation phase, okay? And I'm going to talk about the star formation phase. So do you know what is the lifetime of a star? So for example, you know, sun, how many years does the sun uh, keep living? Anybody say something like one billion years? Raise your hand. If you say it's one billion years, raise your hand. There is, there is a guy in Iraq, yes. If you say five billion years, raise your hand. What is the lifetime of the sun? Five billion years. Bilkiat Erzurum, yes. Ankara, yes. Can you, Ankara, could you really, could you move this uh, camera a little bit to the students, towards the students? so that I can see all the students there. Oh my, okay, that's much better, much, much better, yes. Okay, so yeah, there are some people from Ankara as well. So how about 10 billion years? How many say the solar lifetime is 10 billion years? Selçuk, don't. <laughs> okay, 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 yes. Okay, the, the yes, the, sol, the sun's lifetime is around 10 billion years. But what I'm going to tell you about the star formation and the star formation phase takes only 10 million years. Okay, 10 million years and 10 billion years. So think about this like a, you know, baby in the womb, you know. For example, the baby, it takes uh, something like nine months to, to grow. And in these nine months time, you know, baby, you know, you know, uh, they, uh, the baby feeds from the mother, you know, feeds and breeds and, you know, it gets the water or the, all the liquids from the mother. So it's not self-sustained. Self so what, what we call is like a baby is growing there. So it's like you can compare it to the star formation, star is actually forming. So when the baby is formed, uh, sorry, baby, when the baby is born, uh, what happens, you know, then the baby can breathe, you know, from the mouth and eat from the mouth, you know, they can, it can just self-sustain, so it can just uh, live by itself, by, 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 yeah, by herself or himself. So you can compare it with the star, and the star is actually, you know, when the thermonuclear reaction starts, then uh, we call it a star. So, yeah, don't forget this, you know, ten, you know, the baby takes, you know, uh, something like uh, nine months to grow in the, in, the, in the mother's womb, but, you know, the human's lifetime is, you know, much longer, maybe like 90 years, 100 years, you know, just nine months, 90 years, like 10 million years, 10 billion years, you know, you can, um, you can just, um, you know, learn it that way. But the thing is, the star, we, we are, you know, researching on how the stars and planets are forming, but it's, it's really a big problem. It's not really a simple, uh, 
simple explanation, but it's a big problem. So we, okay, we continue with the, with the address. So you're in some certain city and then you're in certain, some certain country, but you're actually on Earth and Earth actually belongs to the system, in the solar system. With, with the sun uh, rotating it, and the sun is actually inside the Milky Way. So do you know how many stars in our Milky Way galaxy? Milky Way is a galaxy. So who, who would say something like one billion stars? There are one billion stars in our galaxy. Who says that? How about one million stars? Nobody says that. One million stars. Five billion stars. Five billion. Ten billion stars. Who says five, five, ten billion stars in our galaxy? Nobody. Hundred billion stars. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Urak is raising the hand right now. Yeah. Okay. How about Erzurum? Yes, there are actually 100 billion stars in our own galaxy. And do you know how many galaxies out there in space? Something like 100 billion galaxies out there. So, let's just look at this dot here. Actually, you cannot see the dot here because our sun is actually somewhere there. And that, that place is where our sun is located, but we cannot even see in this picture because we are actually too small in, in this picture. And yeah, we are just one of those, you know, 100 billion stars and our sun is just, just one of them. So we are not, we are, it looks like we are not like a very special, uh, uh, special thing in the universe. So as I said, we look at the space, you look at the sky in the, the dark, and we see it's like, you know, oh my God, it's on an empty space, you know, it's a dark, you know, black. But the thing is, empty space is not really empty, you know, because even though there is this, uh, even though there, you know, there, you, you feel like it's like, it should be, you know, empty. No, it, it cannot be, because there are at least a few uh, particles per cubic centimeter gas in there. At least a few molecules or atoms are there. So nothing is actually empty in, in space or anywhere anyway. I mean, on, on Earth, you know, one cubic centimeter has trillions of particles. So have you ever heard of uh, uh, neb nebula? Can you raise your hand? Anyone heard nebula? Oh, okay. Oh, Bilkant Erzurum has heard of it. Urak heard of it. So nebulas are like, you know, are, are like huge clouds. They are actually formed, you know, after the star is, uh, is dying. So, and they're actually the, the place where the stars are actually forming. So it's actually, there's an actual cycle. When the stars are, are dying, you know, when, they, when they're dead, then that, that uh, place becomes the the place for the for the new stars to be born. So there are actually in this picture that's a nebula, and in this picture there are actually stars are uh, forming. So I'm going to give you a huge telescope, and I want you to look at one place in this picture, and I want you to find out where stars are forming. So who would turn the telescope to the you know lower left corner of this of this picture there is a there is a little like a like a cloud there different cloud there who would turn the telescope i'm giving you the telescope time for free and only once okay just select one region who would select you know the upper right corner nobody you have a huge telescope. Who would t turn the telescope to the center, the shiny, brightest region? Okay, Urak. Yes, Ankara. Yes. Erzurum. You don't want to. You don't want to use telescope, Erzurum. How about Erzurum? How about the uh, the left upper corner? There are yellow stars there. Okay, just a little, just a few people. 
Wow, what is this error? <laughs> Are you doing this error? I think Merv is doing that. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I I didn't know that we can do this error. Okay, nice. So a lot of people actually chose the the brightest region in the in the center, but it's not uh, really the place that I want to look at because these are these regions are the 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 place where the stars are actually there. You know, it's not star forming. It's it's where the stars are already there. So what I want to look at is this picture, this place. So there are actually dark clouds, dark molecular clouds in the in these nebulas and these clouds are the places where the stars are actually forming so i'm going to continue later after i talk to talk about this how how we do the observations so we use different types of telescopes how many of you got a telescope anybody got a telescope no. don't worry i never had a telescope either you know i i never <laughs> i've been an astronomer for 20 years but i never had a telescope <laughs> in my life i mean like this telescope of course but like this telescope we of course had to use this kind of telescopes because uh if you want to research on some some subject you need to have a big telescope so for example this is this is a uh, this is grand telescopio canarias it's a, it's a telescope in canary islands the mirror size is something like 10.2 meters. So can you imagine, you know, mirror is 10.2 meters. You know, it, it's probably, you know, from one uh, one wall to the other wall in your room. You know, it's huge. And imagine how much, you know, weight it is, you know, to, to make it, you know, accurately uh, turn to the, in the, into the space. But the thing is, uh, we are not only using optical telescopes. We are also using... Um, uh, different types of telescopes and we actually put different types of instruments to the telescopes for example infrared have you ever heard infrared anybody knows infrared raise your hands okay everybody raise their hands yes infrared you know infrared cameras are sensitive to the temperature for example look at this picture you know you look at the the cars for example the the people are inside the car and you know pe you know, it's like, you know, the heat is, you know, much more than outer, you know, outside, so it's much more red. So if you look at the, you know, the buildings, it's like green. And if you look at the, you know, the the trees, it's, it's like, you know, uh, blue. So it's getting colder. So it's actually sensitive to the temperature. So if I want to uh, find out the temperature, in somewhere in space, I, I need I need to use some some different types of telescope, like the infrared telescope, or uh, or I'm going to show you the another one. So, for example, look at this uh, uh, figure in the sky. So this is the Orion uh, constellation in this in the space, in the sky. But if you look if you look at the op this is what we see with our optical eyes. But if our eyes are oops, so if our eyes are sensitive to infrared. If our eyes would be sensitive to infrared, the sky would look like just like that. You know, it's going to be look like just completely red, and we cannot even see, you know, if there is actually a space out there because it's it's completely red and you know it's just blocked. So let's continue. Okay, we have, uh, as I said, if I if I use a uh, an optical telescope, uh, I use different things, and then if I use a different type of instrument, I use different things. For example, look at this uh, this uh, nebula. So this is called Horsehead Nebula. Have you ever seen this nebula before? It's a very popular one. Anybody, you know, raise your hands. Nobody see Horsehead Nebula, really? Okay, <laughs> this is this is one of the most popular one. Uh, and the, you know the Hubble images. So I mean the uh, the astronomers have really nice imagination, so they can just you know call call the stuff uh, to some uh, real life uh, examples. For example, this is the horse head. It, it really looks like horse head, right? So one thing that you need to get uh, get out from from this slide is you can 
put different instruments to the telescopes and with the different types of instruments you see different things in the same region. So in this picture, in the optical you see like this on the, on the left and if you put an infrared instrumentation to the telescope you see like this and then if you have a radio telescope you see on the right. Okay? And they are completely different pictures and you, you really uh, trace and you really uh, uh, analyze or understand you know different things in these uh, in these regions we don't we, we are not only having just one uh, type of uh, you know grants uh, grant based telescopes we all also have different types of telescopes like this for example a space telescope like you see in the in this picture for example the Herschel Space Observatory that's, uh, I actually uh, worked with this telescope for something like five years. I'm actually working uh, still with this telescope. Uh, so this is, this is the biggest mirror in space. It's, it's a 3.5 meter mirror. So why do you think we, are, we need to put the telescopes in space? Thinking. Just, just, just use your imagination, you know. We need to put some of the telescopes in space because we have a lot of atmosphere an atmosphere has a lot of, you know, water molecules, you know, oxygen molecules, and they are actually, you know, preventing us to see um, the stars, or preventing us to detect water molecules, for example. So that's why we need to take this telescope above the atmosphere so that we can just observe uh, the the stars or galaxies, you know, without the interference of the of the of the of the sky. And apart from that, apart from the space telescopes, for example, there is an STO, you know, there is the, it's a stratospheric ter uh, terahertz observatory, for example. It's, in the, it's a telescope actually uh, inside a balloon. We can hear you, but because of internet connections, we can't, we can't watch the videos. Was it a new system? New? It's, it's a very old. <laughs> ah, it's a very old. Yeah, it has, it has I, been there. I, 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 I just, uh, okay, I just, uh, sorry. Okay, there, there are telescopes like inside the balloon. So think about this huge balloon, and you know there is this basket where the people are located. You know where the, where the people are just standing there. So in the basket, in people we put the telescope inside the basket, and we we look at the sky from there. Okay, so normally these kind of uh, you know balloon telescopes are launched from the southern uh, south pole and it just, uh, you know, rotates something like in two weeks inside, around Antarctic uh, continent. And the other type of telescope is like in the, like the plane telescope, aeroplane telescope, like the SOFIA. Uh, it's a, it's, can you, oops, oops, okay. Uh, can you, can you actually see, there's a little, uh, um, uh, uh, little reg little uh, space in at the back of this uh, teles at, at the back of this airplane, so it has this 2.5 meter telescope inside this uh, this gap, and uh, this this telescope can observe stars you know very nicely because it's something like it puts something like 99% of the atmosphere below the uh, below the uh, below it, and this this Sophia telescope is uh, you know. Is running from California to I think New Zealand uh, a, few, a few days a week, so that it continues uh, its observations. So if somebody asks you where is the best observing site in the world, it's the South Pole. It's the Antarctic uh, continent, and the South Pole region is the best ever uh, observing site because it's something. It's think about like a three kilometer high uh, mountain and it's just ice, nothing else, and especially in the summertime, there is uh, actually uh, very uh, clear and dry weather there, so it's the best ever. So the second place is the Atacama Desert in Chile. I mean, think about, uh, uh, think about the mountain, you know, the mountains are usual like this, you know, but this this area is uh, something like 5,100 uh, meters high, and the it's w at the top of the mountain is just like this uh, you know smooth area, so that 
especially Europe and US are putting their telescopes um, in this desert. And uh, the third best place is the Mauna Kea uh, uh, mountain in the Hawaii. It's something like two, 4,200 meters uh, high. So uh, I talked. I talked about the, how the observation methods are, and then we continue how the stars are forming. So uh, I told you, if you remember, I told you there are dark clouds. So why are they dark? Can you imagine why are they dark? You know why are they dark to our eyes? Because it just contains a lot of dust and gas. So think about the dust and gas everywhere. You know what happens? You cannot see see far away, right? For example, you have a you are you know driving in the car, and there are a lot of you know fog in in front of you. So what happens? You know you cannot see what is in front of you, right? But there is actually something there, but you just cannot see it. It's just like that in this in this dark clouds. It's just dark. Uh, it's so it's just uh, it, it has a lot of uh, dust and gas. So that in optical eyes we cannot see it, but if we have uh, a radio telescope or a submillimeter type of telescopes, we can actually see what is inside there, and inside there there are actually stars are forming. So how stars are forming is these kind of dark clouds are collapsing, and then it starts to you know it starts to rotate and rotate and rotate, and then with the rotation it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and uh, and uh, the stars are forming from there. So how does it initiate? We, what we call is triggered star formation. So for example, a star, uh, an old star, uh, lasts like a supernova explosion, and then it just creates a shock wave, and then with the shock wave it just hits the, for example, hits some nebula, like this here. Oh. It, I think Mertoja is going to put the video here. Uh, okay, it doesn't work. Don't worry. Does it work? It doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, it, it's working. It's working. Is it working? Can you yep. see it? Yeah, I can okay, see. Okay, I didn't. I, I, I can. I can. I can see it. Bill can can see it. Iraq. You saw the video. Right? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. I was I was thinking it doesn't work, but it worked. Okay. Great. So you see that there is a huge uh, a star is exploding, and then the shock wave just hits this uh, nebula, and then it just creates it's like dense regions, and with this dense regions, it just creates uh, it just starts to form new stars in there. So what happens? And then it continues with this rotation. You know, it's with what we call an accretion disk. So it just creates a disk, and then with this disk, it just gets more and more uh, powerful and bigger in the center. And this disk gets, uh, you know, in the beginning, it's very uh, thick disk. And then in time, it becomes like, a, you know, thinner, thinner, thinner. And then with this thinner disk, it just creates this a new uh, planets from these disks. And these planets are uh, like, like, this, like our Earth. Uh, are actually forming inside these disks, and in the end we have the stars like we see in the sky. And I'm telling you this uh, the story. It looks like simple, but it's not. It's completely. <laughs> it's one of the unknowns in the universe. How the stars are forming, how the planets are forming is completely different. You know, it's completely difficult. We have no idea. We know how to how to form some you know little dust particles. And then we know, you know, big uh, rocks, and we know planets, but we have no idea how how it's it's moving from little dust particle to the rock, and from rock to the to the planet. We have no idea how how it happens, but it happens obviously. It's it's everywhere. As I said, you know, it's a it's a huge mystery, and I I hope one of you guys uh, will study this in the future. So what do the astrophysicists do? For example, I and Satchuk is, is, uh, are like uh, observation astrophysicists. So what we do is we go to some telescopes or we, uh, we apply for the telescope time in space or somewhere else. And we do observations, basically. But 
It is it is a lot of fun. We because we have to go to different uh, different places, uh, you know, <laughs> tropical islands, which is really nice. But it's not it's not always that that we do. We always uh, we get this kind of data from there, and you know these are just numbers, you know, crunching that numbers, and then. What we always do is just writing pro computer programs like this, you know, all the time. You know, we just go to the telescope for three days, three nights, one one week per year, and then the the rest of the year we just <laughs> work on the codes. Production and then and the bit, yeah, the beautiful thing is in in the end, we we get these kind of images. So imagine the transformation from those numbers and then to this image, which is great, right? I I love it, you know. From these kind of images, you 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 can actually you know calculate you know a lot of things you know calculate the mass of the of the cloud you know the, the density you know where the star is actually forming you know what's the kinematical information you can get you know you can get everything from there. So this is what we do you know this is what uh, what's basically uh, much more interesting for us. Okay, I will, my last uh, section in my talk is our solar system and what we do at NASA. Uh, uh, so you, you probably know NASA has been uh, around uh, for more than 60, 70 years. So and they have uh, they had time uh, actually to go to uh, all, all the planets and uh, especially. Uh, they go. They actually go to the all the, all the planets. And right now, uh, for example, have you heard of New Horizons? Anybody heard of New Horizon? Uh, there is this. Uh, there is this uh, satellite. Uh, it's just almost arriving to Pluto. It's actually going to arrive around uh, July. And it's going to take a yeah. It's going to take a take a lot of nice pictures of of Pluto. It's going to be the first time. So, by the way, do you know how many planets are there in our in our solar system? How many people? Do you know? Just just raise your hands. Is it nine? How many planets are there in our solar system? Are is it nine? Is it eight? Oh, some Bilkan is yeah 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 Bilkan at the back of Bilkan. <laughs> yes, Ankara is now. Urak. Yes, there are only eight planets in our solar system right now, <laughs> because some people, some astronomers, changed the history <laughs> and they demoted Pluto to some some minor <laughs> or dwarf planet. So yeah, there are actually eight planets in our solar system. Don't forget it. This is important. Yeah. And uh, one of the hot topic at NASA is is uh, is Mars. Uh, uh, actually, the the projects, the Mars projects, are are really uh, getting attention. Um, and actually, I can tell you, you know the. Uh, the Mars is the, is the is the is the only planet that's invaded by the robots. You know there are a lot of robots right there uh, that was invaded by. <laughs> so <laughs> I will show you if my come on my presentation stuck like that. <laughs> So can the I idea try? is. Uh, can I try? Can you can you, you try, Sajid? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's the idea working. is to go to Mars around. It's not working. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait. Yep. I think that one, right? Yeah, yeah. What do you see? Do you see the the landers? Yes. Seriously? Okay, now I can see that. So, okay. Uh, so the idea is to go to Mars uh, or to to land a, a human on Mars around 2030, 2035, maybe 2040. Uh, but we need to we ne we of course need to land uh, you know a few uh, pathfinders beforehand. For example, you know previously 
uh, we could we could land some you know little robots, for example, like this uh, on the left of the of the slide. You know, this is uh, separate and opportunity. They were like little uh, robots like this, and when you have a little robot, you can land it like like this. You know, uh, like this big balls. You just put uh, you just put the robot inside the big balls, and then it just jumps from the space, and then he he hits the uh, Mars uh, Mars surface, and it's 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 still working. But the thing is, right now, if you remember how uh, Curiosity uh, landed uh, about two years ago, Curiosity is by, is a is as big as a car. Can you imagine? You drop a car from space, and then you expect no damage. And the atmosphere of Mars is something like one uh, one hundredth of of the Earth. So it's much much thinner atmosphere. So when you drop something, it just uh, goes down to, to the surface very uh, extremely fast. That's why uh, we uh, we had to find a new different method. And I really uh, uh, want you to watch how the Curiosity uh, land on Mars. It's, a, it's extreme engineering. It's it's really. Uh, it's an extremely nice uh, uh, ideas put 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 forward it and then it just works. And uh, it's a yeah, it's a very big mission. And this is the picture from uh, Curiosity. So you think think of uh, you know think of uh, of of your robot you know arrives to hundreds of uh, millions of kilometers away and then it just takes a picture just like that you know just like you take a take a picture from your camera and it's so so beautiful done this is this is actually a picture from Mars and it's, it's so nice and the last thing that I want to mention is the Voyager spacecraft. So they uh, it was it was launched in something like 1977, and the idea was to go to Jupiter and Saturn and take the the idea it was to take a picture of of there. And then the thing is, it was it was a time of Carl Sagan, and Carl Sagan was one of the most popular uh, astronomers at the time, and he proposed to put a golden. Uh, Plates uh, to the to this uh, um, to this uh, satellite, and there one 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 is uh, for the picture, and the other one has sounds, and you can see it uh, on the right uh, below uh, side of this uh, slide. This uh, this this uh, this satellite actually reached outside the solar system right now. We have a human-made stuff reached outside the solar system and is still uh, working it's still alive it's giving beep 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 to us and we can still hear it it's amazing you know just think about your car from 1977 it still works without you know without changing tires without changing without putting an oil without doing anything it just works from 1977 until now 2015 and then in uh, when 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 Voyager uh, reaches Saturn, they the people in NASA ask peop, ask everyone in on Earth to you know to wear nice clothes you know to get the makeup and you know uh, just give give a nice cheese uh, to Voyager because Voyager was supposed to take a picture of Earth and everybody's supposed to you know look nice and this is the picture of Earth from. Uh, from Saturn, so you're actually down there. <laughs> you cannot even, you know, it's just we are just just like a little dot. Uh, even though we look, even though if you look at from Saturn, we're just a little dot. Okay, I mean that means don't 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 exaggerate yourself. We are just a little thing in the universe, and don't don't think I'm big, you know. <laughs> be humble okay okay uh, this is my presentation thank you very much uh, I hope you enjoyed it and if you have questions you can you know uh, send me the Twitter send me via Twitter and now it's Satchuk. it's thank my you. turn thank you it's your turn
Okay, my presentation will take about 15 minutes, so just shorter. <laughs> and then we will move on question section, okay guys? So let's wait for the presentation and start quickly. So everybody's okay, everybody feels energetic and full of energy, everybody's fine. Raise your hand if you are still alive. Awesome, okay. <laughs> Good. Okay, I'm what still waiting mean? for the presentation. What? I mean, I mean, mean? They, they, I mean, they, you know, they, they, they could be tired of, you know, listening to you, that's why. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you, okay. you, you enjoyed it, right? You enjoyed it, everybody. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, applause, applause oh, for everyone, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, um, Umut, Umut, can you see my presentation now? Because I'm not able to see it. Yes, I can see it. Yeah. It started already. Yes. No. Uh, okay. I, I, well, I think says, I need to wait because. Galaxisca. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It says I know what it says, but uh, it still rotates. Something is still rotating on my screen. So, Tom, are you able to see the, my presentation properly? No. What about you, David? Can you see it? Get okay. out of okay. so, uh, stuff and come, come back down. Just, just, just refresh the page. Okay, okay, yeah. I, That's I, what I, I, did. I will log out and then come back in 10 seconds. We just sometimes have to do it. Sorry, guys. Just refresh, just refresh the page. So let me check if there are questions. I mean, one of the questions is Cora Rauf. She says, Lakta Marabalar, how long does the star formation take? Yeah, I said it, it's, it takes around uh, 10 million years. It's a very short, short time scale. Could a person from a higher dimension be able to bend? 3D objects just like you can bend paper. Hmm. <coughs> I ever do the other dimension? No, I I really don't have any idea. It's a good question though. Okay, let's check if there are other questions in time. You can ask questions, just don't hesitate, just conf astro. Okay, you can do the hashtag conf astro as well. Okay. Oh my goodness, where is um <laughs> Umut disappeared as well? Oh my goodness. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is the for the first first time we are having such te technical difficulties, sorry about, about that. Um, I still think it is very sad, I only like it, but it seems to be back, awesome, um, but I can't see my presentation, goodness. Okay, but uh, uh, Bill can't answer. Kara and Urak, you you can hear me, right, guys? Please raise your hand if you can hear me. Okay, okay. I think there is a delay. Bill Erzurum, can you hear me? Good. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh, let's move on. West section in this case. Mert hocam kapatalım sunumu. Soru cevap kısmına geçelim. Duruyor bek. Finally. Finally. Awesome. Gosh. Okay. 
Okay, guys. Um, if you have a question, please come close to the microphone or use the uh, chat box on the left button or use Twitter hashtag EconfAstro ask, to ask your questions. We will read your questions loudly and then answer for everyone. Okay, we have somebody in Ankara, Bill Kent. Welcome back, Umut. Hi. So what happened? Are, are you not giving the presentation? Uh, no, there's a problem with the presentation, unfortunately. Uh, the, the, you know, this for the first time, that's happening. That's very sad, very annoying. Anyway, okay. We have a handsome guy in Ankara. Uh, yeah, okay. We are listening to you. <laughs> but now uh, you need to open your sound first. Wait. Why was it? Why was it this echo coming from? There is no echo. I have a huge echo. Okay, Iraq says you have a question or one question. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, my question is about uh, dark matter. What is dark matter, according to recent uh, scientific researches? Okay, um, <clears throat> well, the uh, dark matter and dark energy, uh, when you think about it, it is the maybe the least known stuff about the universe. So the dark matter is basically what holds the galaxies together, okay? But we can't see it. But we can see its effect. Like, like we are not you know, able to see black hole, but we can see its effect in the vicinity. The dark matter is when you look at the universe, Everything you see using telescopes or different instruments or your eyes is only 4% of the actual universe. So the rest 96% consists of dark matter and dark energy. And about 20% of this is the dark matter. So dark matter is the, a kind of observational fact. We know that there must be something. But, you know, I mean, I would say if you go back to 10 years ago and today, there is not much difference between the knowledge that we have. So that's the thing I can answer about dark matter. If, if, if Umut wants to add something, feel free, Umut. Umut, can you hear me? I can you not hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, we had a guy in Ankara. I think he wants to ask a question. If can you are ready, okay, you can, can ask you your now? question. Ankara. Okay. Do you hear me now? Yes. Tachuk, do you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Ankara, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, okay. We have a question. Okay, go for it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 So Ankara, it was the wrong question that you disappeared. So next time, think more carefully. <laughs> and then the question of Ankara was, how we disappeared? What would be your answer? <laughs> so, okay, I, I, there, 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 was a, there was a question from Zeynep Serian. I don't know if, it, if Zeynep Serian is in Erzurum or Ankara. No, it's, he's not in, in she's not in Erzurum, so probably in Ankara. No, okay, then, then, then we have to wait for her. <laughs> okay, Erzurum, you can ask questions. Yeah, Erzurum, yes. Erzurum, you can I ask your question your, if you want. Your mobile. Ankara, we are waiting for you. Just turn Arda on Hata. your camera yeah. and microphone. Arda Hata is in Erzurum or not? Where? Arda is in Erzurum? Is he in Ankara? Okay. It doesn't matter. Probably he's on Earth, so you can answer the question that probably they can hear you. I mean, why, why I cannot, why should I answer if he doesn't, he can listen to me. <laughs> okay, we have another question, Iraq. Uh, Silly is signing off. We have uh, classes to attend now, so thank you so much for the lecture.
Uh, yeah, sorry for the technical difficulties, you know, that sometimes happens. And thanks for joining us. Of course. Thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> okay, now we have Bilkent, Erzurum, and Ankara. I think we can continue about 30 minutes, right, Umut? Okay, Ankara Bill can ask question using the chat box on the left button. So they ask that so they do you believe life could be sustainable of Titan? Yes, Titan is one of the amazing moons in our solar system, belongs to Saturn, the biggest moon of Saturn, and it, it really has interesting atmosphere, etc. But I think we just need to make more observation to really understand whether or not there's a life on that moon. And I, I mean, I have a strong belief that the, there could be life, like, like, you know, moons of Jupiter, for example, Europa, Ganymede, etc. Particularly Europa could have oceans under the thick ice layers that he has, it has. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't say for sure, but why not? Okay, I'll, I'll answer Zainab Serian's question then. Considering the unreliable funding nature of the program, do you honestly believe that Mars One will take off? Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't believe that they, it will work. Uh, not, Why is not, that? Not the uh, yeah, not not right now. But the the idea is, you know, not to send people to some planet and then leave them there alone. The, the current idea is still put the people, you know, in another planet, either Moon or Mars, and then bring them back on Earth. So that's not the real idea. You cannot just put suicidal people uh, to send to Mars and suicide there. <laughs> it doesn't work <laughs> that way. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah I, I think I there, there, yeah, there was someone, I, I think I there is someone in Arizona. Sorry, sorry, Mood. Yeah, 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 continue. Yeah, I, I can see you. Yes. Okay, you can answer. <laughs> you can ask your question. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, we asked this before, but you know, because of internet connection, we have some problems. Uh, all of us wondered. Only you know, there was a picture of the solar system, and Pluto also had an orbit around it. And while we were talking about how many planets. Makes nine with Pluto and eight without Pluto, and we said eight. I mean, uh, why don't we count Pluto? And what you okay. Actually, that's a, a bit of complication, but, yeah. that's a very good question. Uh, when uh, Umut and I uh, were students at you know university in Ankara, Ankara University, the, you know about let's say 2003 and four, yeah, Pluto was a planet, but in 2006. International Astronomical Union made a definition of a planet and then uh, it includes three little things uh, if you if you define something if you define an object in the sky as a planet it should have those three things first it should rotate around the Sun yes Pluto does this there's no problem with that second it should have a spherical shape because that's the result of a gravity. If you have enough mass, that's the shape you end up with. Okay, yes, Pluto is spherical. There's no problem with it. But the third one is if you are the biggest, you know, biggest object in your orbit around the sun, you either gather all the mat materials, you know, to you, or you just kick them off. But when you look at the Pluto's orbit, it enters the Kuiper belt and, you know, go out again. It's very close to the Kuiper belt. And then the new observation showed us that there are other planet-like objects there that we call now is the dwarf planet. That's why Pluto is not a planet, but a dwarf planet. But I think there was a meeting at, in, at Harvard University, I think last year, and then there, there were three astronomers one uh, was thinking that Pluto is not a planet, but the other two uh, was thinking that the, were thinking that the Pluto is a planet. And then they also voted 
you know, using the, you know, guys there in, in the meeting, and then they decided, yes, Pluto is a planet, but it, it doesn't matter because we don't care what they think, because the only thing that we can take as a reference is the International Astronomical Union. If they decide that Pluto is a planet, yeah, it could be a planet, but if they do that, there are other two dwarf planets which are bigger than Pluto would be planets. So, in total, at least, we would have at least 10 planets in our solar system. So, currently we have 8 planets. Okay, thanks for the question. Okay, that, that, that's an awesome question. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, there is another question from Arta. When, when, will, we, when will, be, will we be able to colonize Mars? So, that's, I think I answered those kind of questions. So, we still need to land uh, <coughs> a lot of robots and a lot of, you know, uh, resources to Mars first, and then we should send humans to there because it's a long journey and people don't go there for a few days and then come back. So, <laughs> people will stay there for some time. So, <coughs> you need to put all those, you know, jet engines, you know, you know the the rocket to come back to uh, all the food, you know, all the water and everything, you know, you have to send it beforehand. And yeah. you need to solve how the landing problem as well. <coughs> uh, yeah, it takes it takes really long time. It's not really, I mean, the, the optimistic uh, date or year is something like 2030, but I believe at least 2040, at least. And yeah, it's in order to work I at NASA, what should we study in university? Well, you can study anything, basically, as long as it's research-based uh, or STEM-based, science, engineering, uh, technology, mathematics. Yeah, whatever you study, it's always, uh, always a good option. For example, we, we are an astrophysicist, so astrophysicists are, you know, are... Uh, are like you know, uh, uh, like the normal people you know that 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 should be there, but it's not like that. You know, as the number of astrophysicists are actually quite lower than the engineers. There are a lot of engineers who are working on robotics. You know, they are that, you know, especially in jet, jet propulsion laboratory, there are a lot of robotics people or software people or engineering people. I mean, more than much more than half is all engineering. And there are a lot of other uh, fields like geology, you know, earth sciences, and, you know, oceanography. You know, there are a lot of different uh, topics uh, as well. Are, are uh, you know, are, are researching here. So you can study anything basically, as long as you have ambition and you, as long as you you wanna, uh, yeah, you want you want you have questions. Uh, then you should, of course, try to, you know, apply here and try to come here. Yeah, other questions do you have? Arzurum has uh, raised the hand. <laughs> this blue cool, t-shirt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ask your question. Ask me your question. Come, come, to the, come to the camera. Ask the question. It's impossible. I have my microphone. Okay. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we can yeah, hear yeah. you. There is a microphone. That's good. Okay, yeah. Then, uh, in the presentation, we talk about the form, uh, formation of the planet, and in the form, formation of the planet, what is the rotation power to the gaze and dust particles to form a planet? What is the what? What is that? Yeah, if you planet, we say that gaze and dust particles rotate. To form a planet, where does yeah. power come from? Well, it's not, it's okay. not, it's not direct. Okay, the gas and dust particles are, you know, in, in the dark clouds. It's just, it first collapses, and then when it starts to collapse, uh, if you remember this uh, triggered star formation movie, so that there is the shock wave actually makes the dense regions and with this dense regions you know a few a few of this you know uh, uh, of these you know you know uh, uh, denser regions are just 
hit each other and then it just be becomes much bigger, 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 and then, then it starts to rotate. The, the, the problem is, as I said you know, in, in the presentation, we have no idea how to convert from very small to very big. It's, a, it's, actually a, it's actually a big transition and we are trying to find out what it, why is it happening. We know, you know how to form a molecule, we know how to form a little dust, but we have no idea. Uh, of you know from dust to bigger uh, stuff. The main main thing that we see is just the rotation, the accretion disks, and from the accretion disk we see the the stars form and then the planets form. Are there any concerns of introducing biological substances into? Are, okay, there is a there is another question from Ankara. Are there any are there any concerns of introducing foreign biological substances into Mars' environment surface? Yes, of course, a lot of concerns about it. Uh, I remember there was a presentation here. Um, the the guy was talking like, you know, what if we we are we are landing um, we are sending you know robots to Mars, but what if you know? A microbe, you know, a, a, you know, a bacteria, just stick to the, uh, to the, you know, to the robot, and then that robot, and that that bacteria keep alive, and then that robot, that robot arrives to Mars, and then it lands on Mars, and then we do, we do the digging, you know, in the in the Mars, and then when you do the digging. You had this mic bacteria. You had this microbe inside your uh, stuff, in inside the here, and then you put this this uh, this soil to the laboratory, the Mars laboratory, and then you find a bacteria. And then you know, <laughs> and then you say, oh oh my God, we find bacteria on Mars. It's actually no, you know. You must be extremely careful not sending your human bacteria. To Mars and they're refining it there, you know. <laughs> you must, <laughs> you should, you you should be careful about not sending Earth bacteria, uh, and this is really an important concern. You're asking yes concerns. Yes, you shouldn't send that. Uh, <laughs> that not. Uh, that's that's uh, Earth stuff. Until you send, you know, send humans to there. Then we will destroy Mars, as we destroy Earth today. Okay, other questions. Okay, we we will receive just maybe one or two more questions, and I think. Yeah, I think that there is another question in our room. Yes, I can see you. Yeah, you can ask your question loudly, please. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. What does the universe look like beyond the limit of our visible vision? Don't know. Visible vision, yeah. Like yeah, the <laughs> observe, observe. What, okay, we right. call what it observable it like? universe. Yeah, we, we call it observable universe because this is what we can observe, you know. And we have no idea actually, you know, what is not observable because it's not observable. We cannot see it. Uh, we can yeah, the, um, the theory, the, we can actually create theories about. It. Actually, yeah, the yeah. So, sorry, Amut. Actually, my my presentation was about it a little bit because I was talking about the observable universe and the universe itself and expanding universe, etc. So, when you look at the observable universe, we know its size and then its age, but the but the outside of this observable universe that we call the, those observable universe Hubble sphere, okay, and it's expanding as we speak, but you can simply assume that the universe, the whole universe is just infinite. You can simply assume that. Or you can even assume that the parallel universe is as well, but anything you say outside the observable universe is just, it's just, you know, just a word. So you, you, you can, you, you are free to say anything you want. 
But what we can talk about physically, what we measure, if, if you measure something, you know, if you analyze something, if you have numbers, if you have something, then you can talk about it. But that's the observable universe, we can talk about it. But, the, you know, we don't know anything about the outside of the observable universe. But of course, there are, there are some theories about it, but we are not sure. Yeah, now that my presentation is working, <laughs> ironically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say, <laughs> I'd get a joke yeah. Yeah, 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 it, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, that's the Hubble sphere and then the, yeah. yeah. Yeah, let's look at this just size of the observable universe. It is like 93 billion times 10 trillion kilometers. So if we go back, we use light years. Anyone knows what is light year is? What light year is? Do you know it? Do you know that? Okay. It's the time a light, you know, takes if it goes like for one year. So it goes like it's about 10 trillion kilometers. So we know the diameter of the observable universe. But outside this, that black region, let's say, we have no idea. Of course, we have some theories. Anyway, yeah. <clears throat> okay, I, I think we can have uh, some other questions. Tom and da well, David, uh, you can also ask questions question. if you want, if you have any. <laughs> and uh, Ankara Bill Kent, can space time have a negative curvature? Well, that's a very cool theoretical question to ask the observational guys. <laughs> yeah, but uh, now, uh, Ankara, I can answer your question like that. Now, uh, according to uh, last results, current results, universe, I mean, observable universe, is flat. We can't see that curvature in bigger scale because it, I think the universe itself is so infinite, that's why you are not able to see the curvature there is. So we assume that the universe is flat. But I don't know whether or not it, it could have negative curvature or not. First question? What was the first question? Okay, wait. Can we apply star formation principle to ideas like the creation of the universe? Yes, I think so. Uh, because when you look at the star formation, you know, you need to gather material, you know, you need to collapse it to form a star. And then when you look at the formation of galaxies, you need voids in space, okay, the regions uh, with less density, that you can gather the material again. It's exactly the same process. But when you look at the creation of the universe, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's different, right? Because we are assuming that if the, if the universe is expanding, there must be a starting point. That's the beginning of the idea of Big Bang. If there's a Big Bang, like the, you know, very small volume, like the size of a neutron, you, you have everything. After a very, I, I think it's, it's not really the correct way of calling it bang, because it's not a bang. It's a very rapid expansion. Okay? So I think there are some differences. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you should not compare two things uh, like they are the same. No, they are not the same. They are different processes. Okay, now we are, I'm at one o'clock right now. I, <laughs> <laughs> you are daytime right now, I guess. Yeah, guys, I mean, can you ask your questions so using actually, our Twitter we account? We presentations and the <coughs> conference, uh, but you can still ask questions via Twitter or email, uh, always, anytime. Uh, not always, yeah, uh, uh, like to I also this, like uh, to uh, share uh, with you my... So just yeah, just ask anytime, and if you want to become, you know, if you want to, if you're interested in space sciences or something like that, uh, yeah, we would appreciate it, and yeah, uh, thank you very much for your list for listening. Yeah, okay, and then I'm I'm copying and pasting my uh, YouTube address channel address here because I am putting some videos short videos about some interesting stuff about the universe and astronomy in general but for English speakers sorry it the old videos are in Turkish <laughs> but they are of course there are some nice videos and etc uh, so I, I okay, will put the next yeah, yeah. okay Umut.
Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now we now 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 everybody comes to the uh, camera so that we can take a, a selfie picture. Yeah, that's okay, what now, we do at yeah, the end of each talk. Every, yeah, yeah. Come closer to the up. camera. Come closer to the camera come and the show camera. your energy. Show your energy to us, okay? And then we will take a picture, screenshot from here. Um, Awesome. Where are you, Mertoja? Mertoja, come yeah. here. Yes, our coordinator, yes, yes. Mert Kocher, is here. He's rocking. Okay, cool. <coughs> okay, guys, now you can, you know, shake your hands, just smile, just scream, you know, just full of energy. That's what we want to see, okay? Erzurum, come, 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 come closer, come closer, Erzurum, <laughs> come closer. No, look at, look, look at us, not the screen. You know, look at us. You're looking at the screen. You know, just look at us. Look at the camera. Yeah, yeah, come, come <laughs> here. This direction, this direction. No, the other direction. No, no. Yes, <laughs> here. Okay, guys. Now, yeah, everybody at the, the same camera. time. Yes. Yeah, shake, shake your hands. Look at the camera. Yes. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. <laughs> awesome guys, thanks. Take a picture. Take a take a picture in 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 your in the in the classroom as well. Then send send it to us as well. Yeah. And the last last uh, thing send, that uh, I it like it you to do, uh, uh please send it, uh, send it, send it via activity. <laughs> okay. Shut uh up. guys. Shut well, up. this is the this is the first time that we gave the this you know e-conference in English. So please go our website, which is the where is our website, uh, Mertoja? Go our website and fill the form and let us know know your opinion. Okay, this is very important. Except technical difficulties. Okay, please let us know uh, let us know your opinions, which are very important. Yes. Okay, guys, thanks for joining us. You are full of energy. You are the future of this beautiful country and this beautiful planet. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, David. And see you maybe in the future in different projects. <laughs>
And then what you need to do is just raise your hand if you agree with the question, okay? So please raise your hand if you have an answer for the question that we will ask you. So it's kind of a way of communicating with you, okay, using your better language because we can't hear you to prevent this from echo. So please join us. <laughs> okay. Mert uh, hocam, başlayabiliriz. Okay, let's start.
Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Buzz Aldrin. 44 years ago, I made a brave decision to journey into space, and it changed my life forever. And now you too can become a member of this privileged group and experience everything that I have. The X Apollo Space Academy is looking for regular people like you to go into space. If selected, you'll be sent to our space camp in Florida for rigorous astronaut training. The top recruits will then be rocketed into suborbit in an SXC spacecraft. Are you ready to make history? Then join the Axe Apollo Space Academy and leave a man come back a hero. Good luck, everyone. Yeah. I have um you going to Yes, sir. 